Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. So a while back I created a tutorial on how to create vector dimension in topography using Illustrator. And that technique is perfect if you're not sure how large your artwork needs to be used at because whenever you create anything that's vector based, you can rescale it infinitely. You can go as large as you want and you're always going to retain that crispness and resolution of your artwork. If you create it in Photoshop you're kind of limited to how large you create it originally because there's only a little bit of wiggle room of how much larger you can actually go. So if you're going to work in Photoshop just keep that in mind you're going to be very limited so have an idea of how large your artwork needs to be. If you're not sure the safe thing to do is to always create everything in Illustrator. That said, I believe that this effect is far quicker to create in Photoshop, so I wanted to share how to do that. And it is also really perfect if you know how large your artwork needs to be. For instance, if you're creating a greeting card and you never intend on using that artwork again, then Photoshop is a perfect option. So this week I want to show you exactly what you see on screen. This is what we're going to be creating and I'm just going to hop right in and I will share links in the video description of every single thing that I use throughout this entire tutorial. And I'm also going to give you this uh, leaf, not the texture inside of the leaf, but the actual vector artwork of the leaf. Um, I'm going to give that away for free this week. So make sure you definitely check the links there and you can grab that out over on my blog this week. Okay, so I'm just going to create a brand new document and mine's going to be, just go file new, mine's going to be um, just US paper size, but definitely make it any size that you want. I'm going to go 11 wide by eight and a half high and I'm going to keep my resolution 300 but I'm going to set my color mode at RGB in case I do want to use this on the web but keeping the resolution at 300 enables me to revert back to a print resolution if I want to print this at any point I can change this to CMYK but if I want to export this to the web I just need to make sure I come in and change this to 72. All right I'm going to hit OK. Now the background color that I'm using for this, this is kind of a very fall theme because it's November right now. So um, you could use this as a Thanksgiving party invitation or a greeting card. So I'm going to double click this background color and we're going to go with kind of a little more earthy rustic colors. So I'm going to hit OK to make this layer editable. And the color that I'm going to be using for my background is this color, which you can see the RGB color build is 196, 110, 26. And I'm just going to hit OK. And now the keyboard shortcut to set it to your background color. If you're on a Mac, hit Command Delete. If you're on a PC, hit Control Backspace. And this is what will happen. Okay, so now we're going to drop our text on first and we're going to bring the leaf in last for our final touches. So I'm just going to hit T on my keyboard, click and then type out thanks. And I'm using one of my favorite typefaces called Evilith and I'm using the clean regular version of it. This is a purchasable font. Um, but I will leave a link to a free font that's very similar called Novacento. So I'm going to make this white. So I'm just going to make sure this is totally white. Make it a little larger. I hit Command T or Control T on a PC. Hold Shift, grab a corner node and you can scale that right up. And then just position it kind of in the lower third um, because we want to put our leaf up here. Make it a little bit larger. Okay, so next we are going to rasterize this text, uh, but I always like having a live text version available to me if I ever need it. So I'm just going to hold alt click and then drag this down one, turn it off. It's just there if I ever need it um, because now I'm going to rasterize this layer. So I'm going to right click rasterize type and now this is no longer editable it's just a bunch of shapes so the next thing I'm going to do is make a selection of the entire word and I can do that by holding command or control if you're on a PC hovering over this little preview square and just clicking once and that will select everything that's on that layer so the next thing I need to do is draw in the shadow for my T. So I want to create a new layer right above thanks because I want to make sure I keep everything separated. So if I ever need to go back in and just make changes to one part, then I won't mistakenly edit a part that I didn't intend to. So I'm just going to come down here and click this little icon and that will create a new layer. And I'm just going to label this T so I can keep everything straight. Now I need to consider where my shadows are going to be and if it helps to draw it out ahead of time that way you can kind of do everything at once definitely do that. If you're if it's easy for you to kind of visualize where the shadows need to go then you're going to be fine. So I need to I know I need a, I want a shadow right down here right below the crossbar on the T. So that means I need to remove this part of the selection and all of this selection because I want it just drawn right here. It'll make more sense once you see it. But um, 
having whenever you use the brush tool you can actually brush inside of a selection so you don't brush all over the place and then have to delete it later so I'll show you how that works so I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard and that activates my marquee tool and if I hold alt on my keyboard you can see I get a little minus sign when I do that and that tells the computer that I'm removing a portion of the selection so once I start drawing with my marquee tool feel free to let go of alt you don't have to hold it the entire time that you're drawing and I'm just gonna drag it out and make sure it lines up with that crossbar of the T and then release and now I also want to get rid of some of this because when I draw with my brush um, I don't want to mistakenly get some into these letters because it's only going to be brushing inside of selections so I'm going to hold alt on my keyboard and once again get rid of some more of the selection and now I can zoom right in here and make sure that you're on the T layer instead of the thanks layer and then hit B on your keyboard to activate your brush tool and I've got my brush foreground color um, set to black so I know that I'm going to be brushing in black and I also am using a very soft brush and it should be this first uh, brush right here if it's not just use the slider and drag it all the way to zero and you will have a totally soft brush and you can change the size of your brush by hitting the open bracket key on your keyboard to reduce the size of the brush and to enlarge the size of the brush just hit the close bracket key on your keyboard so I like keeping a pretty large brush size because it enables me to kind of come in slowly and as you can see inside the selection now I'm slowly coloring that area and I want a more subtle shadow so that looks great to me so in order to deselect your selection just hit command D or control D on a PC now if I zoom out you can already see that depth beginning to take place. Now I'm going to come into the H and I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to come over to the thanks layer, hold command or control on a PC, click on the image preview, create a new layer, label it the name of your letter, so this is H, and then I can come in here and hit M on my keyboard and then hold Alt and I want to get rid of all of this hold all again hold all again I'm just getting this little crossbar right here that's the part that I want to put the shadow on and that's good enough over here okay so now I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard and now I'm just gonna brush a little bit on this side and I'm just gonna brush a little bit on this side that's where I want my shadows to go okay so if I hit Command-D or Control-D, I can deselect my selection. I can zoom out and kind of preview how that looks. And that's subtle just the way I want it. And now I'm going to move on to the A. And I'm going to speed up the video um, so you can see the A, the N, and the K. And then there's a special thing that we need to do for curves. So we'll stop at the S, and then we'll finish everything off with the leaf. Oh, I did want to mention, um, so the A is a little different because I'm not going to be using the marquee tool. I'm going to be using the lasso tool. So I'm going to hit L on my keyboard. I just want to show you how I do this. So you can see I'm using this polygonal lasso tool. And if you don't have it selected like I do, just click and toggle down to polygonal lasso tool. And I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the marquee tool. Now I'm going to hold Alt, and that will also create a delete selection. So I'm just going to come in here, and I'm going to follow this angle all the way up whoops I can um, if you draw a point where you don't want it all you have to do is hit delete or backspace and it'll delete it and you can try again so I want to follow that angle as exact as I can up here and I want to get rid of all of this and you can see I missed a little bit here but I can use my um, marquee tool to take care of that part Okay, so right now I want to have shadow here, I want shadow here, and then I also want shadow here. So I'm going to do these two first, and then I'm going to come back for this one. So I'm going to hit B on my keyboard, draw my little shadow right here, draw my shadow right here. And now I'm going to remove the rest of the selection that I don't need. So I'm going to hit L again, hold Alt, and then I'm just going to click all the way through these. Okay, and let me also get rid of this. And it looks like I have a little bit of a selection here too that I wanna get rid of. All right, now I can do B and just shade that in a little bit. 
All right, now I can hit Command-D or Control-D on a PC to release that selection. I can zoom out and check it, and that looks nice. All right, I'm going to zoom through the N and the K, and then I'll be back for the S. Okay, now we're to the S. So curves are a little bit different because we have to create selections that are curved first. So I'm gonna come over here. Oops, I gotta label this one K. Okay. And I'm gonna create a new layer for S. I wanna make sure I do that first. And then I'm gonna come over here to my paths um, area. And if you don't see that, you can get to it by going window paths and it'll show up. And I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard and now we're using the pen tool. And you just wanna make sure this toggle down area right here, make sure it's path is selected instead of shape. And then you're just gonna come in and uh, with the pen tool, I'm gonna to kind of follow this curve around and draw a curve that kind of comes up like this. And then we'll draw another one down here like this. So I'm just gonna come in here and draw my big curve over here. and close that and now this is my first path and now I need another path so I'm gonna hit this little icon for a new path and now we're gonna draw in the bottom one. I'm just gonna close it up. Okay, so now we're gonna come back to our layers palette and I'm gonna select all of things again. So I'm just holding Command or Control on a PC and clicking this preview area and I'm just gonna come up here and go select, save selection. And I'm gonna call this um, thanks base and hit okay. Now I'm gonna come back over to my S, make sure you're on your S layer. I can deselect what I've got right now. So I, I'm gonna hit command D or control D on a PC. I'm gonna come back to my paths layer and I'm gonna choose this first path and just hold command or control once again and just click and that'll select that path we drew come back to your layers palette, make sure you're on your S layer, and then go select, load selection, and down on this channel, um, choose that think space that we just created, and make sure you hit this little radial button for intersect with selection, and then hit OK. And like magic, now it's working like we had before, but it takes a couple extra steps because it's curved. Um, you could kind of hatch it together with the lasso tool, but you're gonna have some rough angles in there if you do that. So now I can go in with my brush tool again and just kind of shade it in the way that I'd like. And then Command D or Control D to deselect. And now we're gonna go through the same steps with the second path. So I'm gonna hover over it, Command and then click, or Control and click. Come back to your layer, make sure you're still on your S layer. Select, load selection, choose Think Space, intersect with selection, hit OK, and now we're going to brush this bottom part in. And then Command-D or Control-D on a PC to deselect. And now that looks pretty cool from far away. So the last thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of shadow to the top of the point on the exclamation point, um, just so it kind of seems like it's having a little shadow here from the top part of it. So I'm just gonna select everything again, like we've been doing, make this the exclamation mark, M, Alt, drag it out. Once again, do the same thing, brush tool, and then just shade a little bit on the top. All right, Command-D or Control-D to deselect. And now if we zoom out, that looks pretty cool and it was really fast to do. Now we're just gonna bring in that leaf, so I'm just gonna hop into Illustrator, grab my leaf, copy it, command C or control C on a PC, back to Photoshop. I'm gonna paste it in on top of all my letters, so command V or control V on a PC. Paste it as a smart object, and I'm gonna rescale it. Just make sure um, you're holding shift when you rescale, so you rescale proportionally. Figure out the size that you want. And now I'm gonna bring in one of my watercolor textures and it's out of my watercolor texture kit volume two. And I believe, let's see, file, place. I believe this um, is soft 18, yeah, 
So soft 18 out of the watercolor texture kit volume two. I'll leave a link to that too. I'm just gonna scale this down. And the important thing is, is that this is on top of the leaf. So you're gonna right click on it and choose create clipping mask. And now it's gonna mask it right in there. But that looks really light and we want it to be a lot darker. So if I'm on this layer and I hold alt and just click and drag once, that will create another clipping mask. And this top clipping mask, I'm gonna change the blend mode to multiply and change the opacity to 50% because that's a little extreme. So we're gonna to tone it down a little bit, but it's much darker than it was just on its own. So that's kind of a cheat on making textures darker. Okay, so that's exactly how to create dimensional topography in Photoshop using shadows with your brush tool, and we've used our marquee, different selections, and then even a clipping mask at the end. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday, and head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com, for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. And don't forget to check out the video description for all the links for everything mentioned in this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.